I am Dr. Rivankar Krishna from Krishna Diabetes Care Clinic, Barampur, Orissa. Today, I want to present a case uh, regarding a poorly controlled diabetes woman with genital tract infection. Generally, we see in our day-to-day -day practices. A, starting with the case with the SRP, a 68-year-old woman returns to your clinic for a follow-up visit three months after initiation of empaglifosin 10 mg per deciliter for her type 2 diabetes. Her glucose levels have improved, but she complains of vaginal pruritus and is worried that she has yeast infection. You diagnose vulvovaginal candidiasis in this patient and prescribe a single dose of fluconazole 150 mg. After reviewing her laboratory tests, you notice that since the starting of amphaglyphosin, her HBNC levels has improved slightly from 8.9 to 8.2, but is still not where it needs to be. Her EGFR is 69 milliliter per minute. And the, as we all know, the sodium glucose transport to inhibitors are an increasingly important oral medication class in type 2 diabetes with their use climbing dramatically over the recent years. They result in a broadly similar amount of glucose lowering compared with other glucose oral glucose agents, but can also reduce blood pressure and result in modest weight loss. In addition to their glucose lowering effects, large scale clinical trials have demonstrated reduction in cardiovascular and renal outcomes in high risk groups with type 2 diabetes as well as benefit in patients with heart failure, whether or not they have type 2 diabetes. SGLT2 inhibitors reduce hyperglycemia in people with diabetes by increasing urinary excretion of glucose. This induced glycosuria increases the risk of genital infections and both clinical trials and observational studies demonstrate a 2.5 to 6 fold increase in genital infection in people using SGLT2 inhibitors compared with controls. The development of genital mycotic infection is more commonly with SGLT2 inhibitors and the overall incidence in clinical trials as that have been shown to be around 4 to 6 percent compared to the other oral hypoglycemic agents and can dissuade patients from persisting with treatment. A number of factors have been shown to be associated with risk of genital infection in the general population, in particular female sex and diabetes, especially when glycemic control is poor. The combination of SGLT2 inhibitors and DPP4 inhibitors offer a suitable component in strategy to achieve glycemic target, HbA1c target, without increased risk of hypoglycemia and weight gain with improvement in overall lipid profile. A reduction in the incidence of genital infections associated with SGLT2 inhibitors has been reported with a DPP4 inhibitor added, perhaps because of a, a better glucose control, although other possible mechanisms remain to be investigated. In clinical practice, the risk of genital urinary tract infections may be a barrier preventing patients from receiving or continuing a potentially life-saving therapy. In addition to local hygiene, consultation on how to prevent this GUTI, identifying combination therapies that limit the risk of such adverse effects in an interesting strategy. The putative mechanisms whereby DPP4 inhibitors may moderate SGLT2 inhibitors associated GUTI risk deserve some comments. By far, the most straightforward explanation in the DPP4 SGLT2 inhibitor combination reduced glycemia and glycosuria more than SGLT2 inhibitors alone, thereby resulting in protection from GTI. DPP4 activity is present with some yeast, molds, and bacteria, and its inhibition may directly modify microorganism organismal function. This highly speculative and sophisticated hypothesis need to be tested experimentally. Thank you.